so we're going up to the boat. Um, woke up this morning and it was a lovely sunny day. Look at the blue skies. Whoa, yeah, blue skies. So I've got no plan really. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to get up there this weekend while the weather's going to be nice. And have the deck boards off for the stern. See if we can dry out the engine build. Also get the crash cover open to see if we can dry out the uh, well deck. And uh, maybe look at scraping or washing or doing something with the hull in the car. Because, uh, like I said, the camper van is up. <laughs> waiting for a new engine. Anyway, we're in the car, so I don't know if I'm going to stay on the boat tonight because um, even though the weather's nice, the temperatures are going to bloody drop and um, yeah, obviously it's just a bare shell at the moment, so it's going to be sodding cold if I stay. Um, obviously I haven't got the camper van to live in tonight, so yeah, let's see how it goes. Some other news as well, non-boat related. I don't know if you can notice, there's something missing. Had enough, had enough of the dreads. Three years I've been growing them. And uh, it was their time, they had to go. Just like the boat, took it back to a bare shell. Anyway, let's crack on. Alright, let's have a look and see what we're going to do here. I think the plan is just to have a look at this waterline. Do you want to scrape some of this muck off? Make use of the sunshine. And uh, it'd be nice out in the sun. It's got to be done at some point, so why not today? Nice out in the sun. Number one, it was definitely a good idea to cut off the dreadlocks. Ooh. I've had so much crap in my hair by now. Number two, face mask. Face mask, I'm going to get a face mask. These goggles, they're, they're brilliant. You just cannot do this without goggles, no way. There's no way you can do this without goggles. Goggles are an absolute minimum. A face mask would be ideal. And then number three, hearing, hearing the, this is well noisy. PPE, personal protective equipment. I get drummed into me at work so much about PPE. It's some things you just can't do without. Goggles, and ear defenders, when you're dealing with that, it's a must.
scraping to do now. What it was like. What it is like. brush in there I've had the uh had the wire cut on here let's get a wire brush in here and then we'll be good to go or maybe it's just a jet wash tomorrow who knows so there's a bit more scraping to do now we can get all this crappy old magnesium off uh, old anoids anodes Jesus. Boop, 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 boop. Don't think we'll be getting that done tomorrow. So I'll just concentrate on one half of the boat this weekend. And uh, we job job a good end. And uh, maybe next weekend we'll do the other half. Scraping the hole with a scraper now, just a scraper, and uh, got some overplating on the front, on the front, on the bow. And uh, when you're scraping this old bitumen off, it's going straight down to bare metal really easily. Absolutely crumbles off. think the rest of the boat looks alright. Got a nice coat of picture in there as a base. And we can put two coats of bitumen on top of that. Look at that base plate. Overplating. This overplating here. It's just gone right down to the bare metal and I think that's because there was no primer put on before it was black when it was overplated so I'm going to put two coats of red oxide on that before I put any black in on and I think the rest of it and it's just a little clean up a little clean up and uh some blacking straight over the old stuff. Got the same thing going on here. Right down to the bare steel, just a scraper.
see there, that is just going down to the bare steel. Now let me show you something. There's the seam for one half of the stretch section. And there's the seam for the other half. Now isn't it funny how the blacking seems to be coming off straight down to bare metal, just in the stretch section. Whereas the rest of the boat's fine because as you can see from the scrapings on the side here, underneath the blacking on the rest of the boat, it's been primed. So it looks to me like there's been no primer put on the steel in the stretch section of boat from there to there and on the overplating at the front. So therefore the blacking is just coming straight off when we're going down to bare metal. So I'm going to have to uh, put some primer on that before we uh, re-black it. Some people just leave the old, the old brackets in place and the world's new anodes over the, above. Oh, I think I'm the, the second one came off, piece of piss. Uh, a new technique, let's show you that. The second one involved cutting and then grinding. We'll give that a go on this. Okay. I'll get quicker.
uh, number four. That four. That's what the other one looks like now. Just ground down. It's not about getting it perfect. It's never going to be perfect. There's pitting. There's uh, corrosion. There's all manner of things and imperfections. It's just a case of getting the ground down, giving the whole, you know, the whole hull a blank canvas when it comes to putting anodes on at a later date and the, uh, you don't have to worry about putting them on in the same place as they were if anything yeah I suppose probably going to stick these on the same kind of place but yeah you know at the moment it's just about getting everything wire wool wire, wire wheel brush and clean and just yeah two coats of black in it's just protected then for the time being Give this a go. These abrasive wheels have been recommended to me by Mr. Olivella. Uh, so he gave me this one to give it a go. So thanks, Ollie, for giving this to me. And uh, if you want to go and check out Ollie's channel, it's Olivella Narrow Boat. Well, you weren't wrong, Ollie. Straight down to bare metal. I do wear out a bit. But yeah, they are heavy old duty bits of kit. Any nasty, stubborn bits you got, I'll take you right back down to metal. Front overplate in, where that went down to bare metal, giving that a coat of red oxide. Little dips and dabs wherever it's gone down to bare metal, and of course, a bit in the middle that just went down to bare metal as soon as you scraped it off with a hand scraper. It's just one coat on there at the moment. Let that dry, and then I'll give it another coat. Also, a little bit on where I took off the anodes. Of course, one of the anodes was on the overplate in at the front, so. Two birds with one stone there. So, this is more work than I thought. I thought I was just going to scrape off the old dusty waterline mark and and then put on some uh, blacking. But uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a job. Still good though. Still got this left to do. Get that anode off, get the rest of this scraped off, all this mud and crap. And uh, yeah, weather is sweet. The sun's just gone by behind a cloud. Come on, sun. Come on, sun. Enjoying it though, enjoying the weather. It's nice to be out. So, all that there had to be red oxided. Steel plate in at the front. And then also as well, 
thought I'd check out the uh, steel plate in front here. It's probably going to have to be red oxided. I don't know. We'll see what happens when I scrape that off. Started scraping the other side, and it was the same here. The paint was just coming off with a hand scraper where the stretch section is. So that's been done on this side as well. Still got to a uh, wire brush down here, all along here, take off the anodes. But, uh, well, yeah, I never expected to have to uh, red oxide. So we've got the whole side of wire, one whole side still wired, oxided where it needs oxiding, and all three anodes off. Fresh start. So once we get the black on there, hopefully that won't have to be done for another two years. Should just about be uh, fitted out by then. <laughs> oh dear. 